Good day, everyone. This is Chris of the Ancient Scholar, and uh, we're actually going to do something. I'm actually going to do something very different today. Uh, I actually have a one weekend off this month, and I'm going to take it off. And I'm actually about 50 miles north of Tucson, Arizona. You can see Mount Lemmon over there in the Catalina Mountains. Uh, Tucson's on the other side of those. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at a rather incredible uh, science uh, project that actually started... Construction was started in about 1983, 1984, I believe, in the 80s. It was completed in 91. And uh, two separate missions occurred at this uh, particular facility. One uh, went from uh, 91 to 93, and then the second mission went, uh, didn't even go a year. It was from March of 94 to September of 1994. And basically what they did is they built this huge structure. This is about a three-acre structure that we're looking at. Uh, you can see the main glass structure there that uh, contains one of what was known as a biome. And, um, of course, this structure is known as the Biosphere 2. And the Biosphere 2 is a, a massive, again, like I said, about a three-acre uh, structure, uh, 7.2 million at a cubic feet of uh, glass with about 6,500 to 7,000 windows. And uh, we'll get a little closer, and I'll take you guys on a little tour through there. Um, but within this structure, there are different what are called biomes, and the biomes are basically um, facsimiles of environments uh, that we run into here on Earth. For example, there's an ocean, there's a savanna, there's a uh, tropical rainforest, um, all complete with uh, environmental uh, conditions such as temperature and moisture that approximate what you'd actually find here on Earth, um, and uh, indigenous uh, plant species. And uh, the, the, from the two missions and from the ongoing research, we, we're really beginning to find out uh, a lot more about uh, the Earth, about the biosphere um, of our planet. And it's actually called Biosphere 2 because it's basically a little uh, planet within uh, the greater planet. Uh, we're finding out a lot about the environment, about life, about how things change. I know there's a lot of uh, misconceptions there are a lot of misconceptions about the biosphere too that it was a humongous failure and that the missions themselves I, I suppose in one aspect could be viewed as a failure uh, but we've learned an incredible amount uh, from the, the missions that occurred and basically what happened is during those missions they took a group of people sealed them into the biosphere too and then they had to live without any any uh, real outside help they had to grow their own food and, and we learned a lot of things about uh, you know, about malnutrition, about uh, how uh, pollination occurs, um, about what happens when things die, um, what happens um, in uh, nutrient-rich, calorie-starved environments. Uh, so, uh, actually, uh, the information that came from uh, these missions and the ongoing mission uh, is a lot of critical information, a lot of good science is actually coming out of here. And now the University of Arizona has actually taken over the, the general operations of this, 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 this project, and there's still ongoing research uh, to this day. So we'll, we'll take you guys in. We'll do a little tour of the facility. I hope you guys like uh, this video that I'm uh, preparing for you guys. Okay, so we got checked in. Tour starts in a couple of minutes. Got a little map here. So we started here. We're going to hike down to the biosphere proper. And you can see the outside glass structure here that we're moving toward. And it is uh, quite an impressive sight to see from the outside. And I hope to get some decent video from the inside. We're actually looking at the uh, rainforest biome there. And gotta go down some stairs and we'll meet in the kind of the main living quarters. We'll see you guys down there. All right, so we've hiked down. We're right in front of the uh, Biosphere 2. Uh, this is, a, again, this is the rainforest biome here. Can't really see a whole lot inside. We'll actually be inside there in about five minutes. You can see uh, we're down here. 
And we're actually going to go through this entrance here, and this is actually, this area here is kind of the main living quarters uh, for the, uh, the people that were sealed inside of here. And we'll be looking through all the different biomes um, in addition to something called the lung, which is an interesting uh, structure, uh, which is actually over here. And basically what it is is a huge uh, rubber diaphragm. And what happens is as, as this heats up and cools off, you know, the sun comes in and heats the um, atmosphere inside of here. Of course, the atmosphere is an ideal gas and uh, it's going to expand as it heats up. That pressure is going to increase, and if this is just a solid sealed structure, uh, what, what could happen is that you know that pressure could potentially overcome, and you, know, you could have crack windows and have blowouts and leaks. Uh, so what we have is a huge rubber diaphragm inside of the lung, and that diaphragm can kind of expand and contract as uh, the temperature changes uh, throughout the day inside of the biosphere too. Just doing our pre-tour briefing here. A recognition that our planet is small, isolated, and vulnerable, but also precious and, at least in our solar system, completely unique. Okay. We're now entering the biosphere after our briefing. There's a good view of the ocean right here up at the corner by the door if you want to get a picture of that. on the outside environment too, but we're not a closed system anymore, so air can come in. Typically, this is a tropical savanna. Out in the world, and um, that's how we have it in here as well. And they can range from a couple hundred miles to a couple thousand miles. They come about, or represent about um, a quarter of the Earth's lands. That's a lot of savanna. Regionally, uh, regionally, we can blame a little bit on cattle grazing, uh, early, you know, 100 years 
so cattle grazing was very, uh, Okay, we're back again and we are moving out of the tropical savanna and we're moving into the marsh and then after that we will be going down into the uh, coastal desert. standing in um, the freshwater and saltwater marsh area here on our right into more the saltwater marsh okay we're now moving on to the uh, desert which is going to be actually down um, kind of in one of the, the, the upper part of the biosphere so we're down uh, a little lower uh, this is all fairly fairly humid, fairly tropical environments that we've been in. It's about 7 degrees cooler down in the uh, desert biome. And over there, you see they have these plastic partitions here that kind of separate uh, the different biomes, um, particularly when it comes to moisture. Intakes and outtakes here. Let's see several of them throughout here. Okay, you can hear me okay? Right. We're standing in the desert biome, and there are several different desert ecosystems on the planet. And um, they all share a common plant that we Okay, we're now heading down into the, uh, the basement of the biosphere. This is where um, a lot of the environmental processing occurs in the water, the air. Very, very incredibly interesting from an engineering standpoint. So we'll take you guys down here. Noticeably cooler. And you see this is an engineering marvel. This is actually one of the intakes and outtakes that I was looking at earlier in the, in the desert. And so there's a fair amount of breeze coming through here. desert basement that we're in. Obviously uh, the main part of the structure is about three basement, uh, football fields long, so a whole lot of stuff here. Okay, so we're standing in our technosphere, which is like the basement of the biosphere. Well, now we're entering the, uh, the lung. When I talked about air being uh, obviously 
the atmosphere that acts as an ideal gas, both the Galen's acts and uh, Charles Law applied here. So again, as uh, the structure heats up and cools off, the air is going to expand and contract, and it's going to cause uh, fairly significant pressure changes. And the way around that is to have a large flexible lung that can kind of accommodate those uh, changes in pressure. Okay, we're now uh, leaving the lung, and you can see that the lung is actually uh, collapsing a little bit. And she has a door open here, and obviously there's a pressure gradient. And the driving pressure is uh, driving air out of the building, and so this is uh, slowly, slowly dropping, dropping down. You can hear the chains as they go, and uh, we'll transition to the uh, door of the lung here. Fair, obviously a fair amount of uh, air movement and uh, flow of air, so expect a little wind as we go through the door here. So we just left the lung and we're going to hike up. You can see uh, Biosphere 2 proper. There's a second lung here. These are the uh, energy processing centers. An electric, uh, electric and natural gas generating in addition to heaters and coolers in here. Here we are outside of the lung again. I just wanted to show you this is actually the tunnel that I was in uh, that connects the lung to the uh, the uh, Biosphere 2 proper. So it's actually walking underground uh, and we're headed toward the, the biosphere here, the, the desert part of it. So we're kind of on the back half from where we started. All right, so we're actually staring at the uh, flagship project that is being rolled out by the Get University of Arizona. Of this is called the LEO project. And uh, this is what they do is they have these very large and, um, angle, it's kind of hard to see here, let me see if I can, very large um, steep angle of uh, landscape. And they're trying to understand how water interacts with landscape after it falls out of the, uh, the, bio, uh, the atmosphere. So you have uh, these three um, have these, these three uh, setups in there. So it's called the Leo Project. Hopefully we'll get some good information from that. We're now going to move back into the uh, human habitat uh, where the biospherians uh, ate and lived and interacted uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Only powerful water can be taken inside Biosphere 2. If you have anything else that is not water, you can leave it right here. And if you have food or anything like that, please keep it in your purse, keep it in your pocket. Living 
headquarters were down in here. Okay, guys, that's it for the end of uh, this brief tour through the Biosphere 2. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if you're in the uh, Tucson area, uh, it's only about an hour from Tucson. Definitely recommend it, and obviously uh, about half of the, uh, actually half of the money um, that you pay for inter the entrance to do the tour and all that, half of that actually goes to help fund uh, active research that's ongoing here. And it's actually pretty important to research, particularly when you talk about uh, water and um, how, what water's role is and, and how its role, how important its role is. And, and believe it or not, we as human beings don't have a particularly good appreciation for uh, the, the role that, um, that water plays. We know this is very important. You know, we know about the, we know very, very much about the chemistry of water and, uh, you know, about it being polar and, and so on and so forth. But this is really helping uh, us particularly the Leo project uh, helping us to develop a um, a big picture if you will of the, the role of water in uh, the world ecosystem and, and this is really nice because we can uh, we can kind of compress time if you will and we can run experiments and maybe accelerate them like the Leo projects a 10-year experiment you know versus hundreds thousands and millions of years uh, so this is certainly uh, the data that we can collect from this is, is just so critically important uh, for understanding you know, how, how fundamentally how the world works. Okay, guys, again, I, I hope you enjoyed the, the videos, and as always, uh, thanks for hanging in there.